Hello people and welcome to the Virtual News Network where we literally shovel information directly into your eyeballs. MetaConnect has been and gone. Quest Pro has been announced and it's expensive and underwhelming at the same time. New hardware from Meta and Pico are fine, but where are all the AAA games in VR? Could Prey Dog's Universal Unreal Engine VR Injector mod be the solution to the VR game drought? Microsoft and Meta are teaming up, which means flat screen fans will soon be able to play their fave games on a huge screen on Quest. My final story is that Quest 3 is confirmed by Zuckerberg, but there is a caveat. So make sure you stay till the end of the video for that story. Excited? I know I am. So let's get straight into it then. And remember, we're born to respawn. Before we start, I have opened up channel membership. So if you enjoy this video, you can now click the join button, get custom emojis, channel loyalty badges, members exclusive giveaways, and help support the madness that is Mac and VR. Thanks. The dust has settled over Meta Connect, or should I say, meh, to connect. The Quest Pro reveal was a damp squib. We already had all the technical specs due to CAD drawings and supply chain information. Plus we already knew what it looked like because some engineer left a production model in its packaging in a hotel room. So what did happen? Meta have done a drastic U-turn on Connect by discarding consumer VR in favor of business and enterprise instead. Are Zuckerberg and the gang feeling the pinch of all the bad business and anti-competition decisions they've made over the past few years? Launching an expensive business focused headset into a disinterested market is a huge gamble, especially given the limitations of the Quest Pro. All that tech is battery hungry. The headset has a stated battery life of between one and two hours. So how can you call that a productivity device? I don't know about you, but two hours is the time it takes me to make my coffee, read my emails, catch up on Twitter and YouTube before even thinking about doing some real work. Oh wait, battery has died, bugger. The only thing left to get excited for was all the lovely games we'll be playing over the Thanksgiving and Christmas period. So when Melissa Brown and Andrew Bosworth started to talk about games, we all went silent and listened intently. First up, Iron Man VR, a port of the previous PSVR exclusive game, a fun but limited superhero experience. Among Us VR has been floating around since the Meta Gaming Showcase in April, but now we have a concrete release date on November the 10th. I am looking forward to this but it's not a system seller, as the format is available on so many other platforms. Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners Retribution, the follow-up to 2020's excellent zombie shoot 'em up will be with us on the 1st of December. I am very excited about this, as the original Saints and Sinners is one of my all-time greatest VR games. Skydance then also teased a new game coming in 2023 called Behemoth, but the teaser gave nothing away, so I can't even speculate on that one. And that was that, to be honest. I felt deflated. Is that it? Is that what we got to look forward to? So where were the notable absentees? Starting with Ubisoft, obviously Splinter Cell got unceremoniously canned in the summer, but where was Assassin's Creed Nexus? Where was Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas? Where was Ghostbusters? Not a peep, nada, nothing. It's all well and good having all this lovely new hardware, but if you don't have any games to play on them, then we're staring down a precipice. And I'm looking at you too, Pico. It's not just Meta stumbling along. So is there any light on the horizon? Yes, but it's coming from slightly left field with the frankly astonishing PCVR remake of Half-Life 2 by Team Beef, who also did the amazing Doom 3 quest port. It may be the flat screen to VR mod scene that saves the day. Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast is playable on Quest 2 currently if you're a patron of Team Beef and will be widely available to the general public sooner rather than later. But the most remarkable story is Prey Dog's universal Unreal Engine VR injector mod, which will basically allow most games based on the Unreal Engine to port to VR with relative ease. I have linked the full article on Upload VR in the description below because it does get a bit technical, but all you need to know is that this works and it will be with us very soon. The demo on YouTube shows someone playing Ready or Not, the hardcore breach and clear game in VR with full six degrees of freedom and motion controls. This is followed by Back for Blood, Stray and Ghost Runner. The list of potentially compatible games is extensive and contains many AAA games like Jedi, Fallen Order, Gears of War, Sea of Thieves, Insurgency Sandstorm and Firefighting Simulator. I'd probably crap at that. <coughs> So it would appear that VR's AAA titles might just be saved by Team Beef 
and Prey Dog injecting, literally, much needed vigour into PCVR and standalone quest titles. Which port am I most looking forward to? As a massive fan of the Coalition and Marcus Phoenix, it has to be Gears of War for me. Chainsawing a Locust drone with a Lancer assault rifle would make this old soldier the happiest person alive. This next story actually ties in nicely with my where are all the AAA titles question. Microsoft and Meta are teaming up to bring Xbox cloud streaming service to Quest 2. The Xbox streaming service allows you to play your Xbox games on any smart device that can run the Game Pass APK. If you have the smarts, this can already be done, but the quality is not so great. So, with official support, I am expecting to play Halo Infinite on a screen so big, my eyes will explode. The service is reliant on a good Wi-Fi connection, and my experience so far is favourable, though not perfect, with some stutter and screen tearing, but as technology evolves, these problems will recede, and I, for one, am extremely excited to play my Xbox library on a big screen in VR. My final story of the week is that Quest 3 has been confirmed by Mark Zuckerberg. It will cost between $300 and $500, but it won't be out anytime soon. The Meta CEO confirmed the headset is in development, but won't be out this year. However, schematics leaked to Brad Lynch of YouTube channel Sadly It's Bradley revealed that the Quest 3 will incorporate many features of the Quest Pro, like the pancake lenses and colour pass-through. However, the new HMD will not contain eye or face tracking. It will also be running on a heavily revised XR2 chipset with potentially twice the processing power of the Quest 2, which would enable the Quest C to run higher fidelity graphics on improved high resolution displays. Great. What do you think? Are you excited for Quest 3 or are you going to buy a Quest Pro? How about the much more affordable Pico 4, which is releasing imminently? Or do you just want to play more games on your current headset? You know the drill, get involved and comment down below. Don't forget that I've opened up channel membership, so if you enjoyed this video, you can support me by joining my crew and getting access to all the exclusive perks that brings, and it'll only cost you two bucks a month. Excellent. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side. That was my knee, again.